In this accessibility crash course, we'll cover some of the key things you need to know to make your Webflow site accessible, along with how to test with browser tools and screen readers. So to get started under layouts, let's drop in a basic nav bar here, and we'll also grab one of those pre-built layouts for our footer here, and we'll just add that to the page and publish. So this page doesn't have the best accessibility, but we're gonna try to save it. So we'll start by going to our publish site here and we'll right click anywhere on the page and click inspect. And then next to styles here, we'll click this arrow and go to accessibility. From there, we'll hit the toggle to enable accessibility tree and then reload our dev tools. So then we get this accessibility icon popping up. If we click that, we'll see what screen reader readers uh, will read. And then if we unclick that, we'll see all of our HTML. So we have what are called landmark regions. These are key areas of the page the user can jump to without having to manually tab through every element on the page. And right now we just have the one, the banner uh, region here. Now we can create these regions either by using the correct HTML element or we can add a role equals banner or whatever the landmark is we're trying to create. Now it's always preferable to use the actual HTML tags. So if I was to create a nav bar from scratch, I might go ahead and set it to be a tag of header. And then within that, I might have a link block for my logo, a search bar and other elements. And then I might have a tag of nav inside of that to hold all of my nav links. Now, because this header is the first one on the page and it's not inside of another landmark, it's automatically treated as a role banner element here. Now for the default Webflow nav, they actually have that role equals banner just attached to a regular div. So that's how they're creating the header of this element here. Uh, we can't actually see it here, but it's on that element. And then within that, they'll have the actual uh, nav tag in here to hold all of the nav links. So that's set for us there. Now, if we uh, were to check this out, our accessibility tree is a little bit messy right now because we have all of these elements that aren't wrapped in any kind of landmark. And every element should have a parent or great grandparent or should be wrapped somewhere in a landmark. They shouldn't be free floating here. Uh, so what we wanna do is we'll set this uh, div here that holds all of our sections over to a tag of main. And again, we could use a role equals main if we want, but it's always preferred to use the actual tag. And so if we publish that, we should notice that this is gonna clean things up quite a lot because now we have these key areas that users can jump to, the main, the banner area or the main area. Now we'll notice that all of our footer elements are just kind of free floating here. They're not wrapped in any landmark. And that's because Webflow set this footer to a tag of section by default. And sections in and of themselves aren't key landmark areas. So what we would actually want to do is use a tag of footer or a role equals content info uh, attribute. In this case, we'll just use that tag of footer. And that way we're wrapping this footer in one of those key areas. Now you might notice on some sites where people wrap like elements within a card inside of a header tag and the bottom part of a footer within a footer tag to section off long pieces of content. And that's totally fine because that element is inside of another landmark like main, it's not treated as the core site footer or header. Now this footer element that we have here, because it's not wrapped within another landmark like main or anything, this is gonna be our core content info uh, landmark for the page. So we have our banner, our main, and our content info, which is the footer. Now these landmark regions aren't named right now, and that can be fine, but if we have multiple of one of these regions, like for instance, in this case, I have a nav tag, but down here in the footer, I might wanna switch this to also be a nav tag so that both of these uh, users who want to tab to the next nav on the page can easily just jump to that navigation. And so we're marking these both up as navs. But we need to let users know which nav are they focused on. So we need to give each one a unique name. So here, you'll notice I have this nav here in the footer, but it doesn't have a name. The name is empty. So if we're going to use a tag more than once, we want to make sure we give it a name. And a way we can do that is adding an area label. So if I say area label, and I'll say this is going to be, maybe this will be something like my, um, let's say, directory uh, nav. Now, we don't want to say directory nav. We don't want to include the word nav in there because the screen reader will automatically announce nav anyway. So they'll say directory nav navigation. They'll repeat it twice. So in this case, we just want the actual name of this nav, which is directory. And for the top nav, we might do something like we'll give it an area label for this one. 
and we might give it something like an array label of primary or main or whatever we want to call this main nav. So now if we publish, we should notice that each of those navs are going to have a unique, a unique name. So when a screen reader user uh, taps onto them, it won't just announce navigation, but it will announce what type of navigation are they focused on. Now, if we had two collections of navs that had the exact same nav links in them, then it can be helpful to actually use the same name for both of those instances. So if we take a look at Apple's footer here, they have the RIA labeled by attribute instead of a RIA label, and it's pointing to an ID that's applied to this heading. So the footer here is being labeled by the headings text. If we take a look at our accessibility here, footer's label here coming from heading text. And that heading element here is hidden. We can't see it on the page. It has these styles that keep it hidden from us, but still readable by screen readers. And a couple of reasons we'd want to do this is first, screen reader users often navigate by headings on the page. So they'll go from one heading to the next to the next. So if our element doesn't have a heading, they'll often miss it when navigating that way. But also, whenever a user is translating with their native browser translate, ARIA labels don't get translated, but text on the page does. So for that reason, I prefer to use actual text elements instead of ARIA label there. So the way we can do this if we head over to this footer is we'd give it that ARIA labeled by attribute and we can have any ID, I'll call this footer title. And then I'll just go ahead and drop in a heading in here. I'll call this something like company name. So it should announce company name footer whenever it's uh, announced there. And I'll give it that ID of footer title. And that way it's connected to this uh, area label by attribute here. So if we go ahead and publish this here, then we should actually notice on our live site, we're actually going to have a label here. And if we head over to this toggle, we'll notice the footer now is labeled by that company name heading. Now, the heading there is still visible. So to actually hide it, what we want to do is give it a class of screen reader only. And to do that, we can add padding zero on all sides, margin auto, within height of one pixel, overflow hidden, position absolute, and also this clip to completely hide it. So once we do that, we have hidden text that's also labeling our footer. Now back on the Apple site within that footer, you'll notice they also have this section element and it has this area label footnotes. So section elements in and of themselves aren't landmarks, but once we add an area label or a area label by attribute to them, they become these landmarks called region. And we want to use these sparingly. We don't want to have every section be a region element. So if a section has an accessible name, a RIA label by or a RIA label, it becomes that region. And that becomes a key area that screen reader users can jump to on the page. So in this case, we don't really need a section inside of this footer, but we could create sections that are region elements only for very specific key areas of our page. Now here we'll notice that each of these elements look like they could be their own section, but they're actually wrapped in one sort of section parent since they're all just products within this section here. So the way an element styled isn't necessarily the way that it should be marked up. We should separate our styling from our tags. The simple way that we usually do this in all projects is for all links, for instance, we might go ahead and set the color to be inherit. So we're removing the blue style here. And for the decoration, we'll remove the underline. Now, the problem is if the client just adds a link inside any element here, we can't really tell that's a link and that's not great for accessibility, but we do want to use the link tag in a lot of other places where we don't want that style. So the solution is we can say for any link that does not have a class, we can give it an underline, make it bold, change its color, or anything we want to do to style our links throughout the site. And once we do that, these links will have that default style, but as soon as we add a custom class to add our own styles, those default styles go away and we don't have to manually clear them each time. Now, another place we might wanna do this is for list elements. So for list elements, we use that for nav links, we use that to, for a list of cards. We don't necessarily want those bullets there each time. So we can go to the all unordered list here. Now, if we clear that style here, some screen readers won't announce it as a list anymore. So instead under custom properties, we want to add a list style and then we just add an open and closing quote. I learned this trick from Kevin Powell. It's a great one that keeps this readable by screen readers while still removing that default style. And I can go ahead and remove the default padding under this. And now we can start using that list tag in a lot of different places. 
Now, the client can't add lists inside of headings and paragraphs like they can with links, so we don't have to worry about that there. But for any long form content, the client can actually add their own uh, list elements inside of rich text. So usually I just create a class like rich text here, and I apply that to any blog post or any place that will be long form content. And then on this list here, I say any list inside of this rich text class will add that uh, bulleted style back and add the padding back and anything else so that we have some default styles for this long form content. But for our normal page building, we want to keep those tags clear. And I've done things before, like setting the section tag to position relative. But again, that gets in the way uh, whenever we want to use a section tag inside of a footer or in different places. So it's best to just leave tags completely unstyled and add classes when we want those stylings applied. So what we'll notice here is I have this card element and it's a link block. And if we were to check out our published site here on accessibility, we'll notice that each link is just pulling for its text. It's pulling the alt text of the image. It's not pulling in the heading or the paragraph for that card. So this isn't great for accessibility because this is just too much content uh, once you tab onto a link for the screen reader to read. Ideally, the entire card would not be a link. Um, so what we can do instead is convert that entire card to a div. And we just want a link block inside of that card. I'll give this a class like clickable wrap and we'll set that link block to position absolute so it covers the full card which means the card here would need position relative to contain it and then for this link we'll notice that when I tab onto it the radius isn't quite matching that border radius so we can go ahead and just on the link here I like to give it under custom properties a border radius inherit so it inherits the radius of the parent whatever the card or parent is now we could add an area label to give this link some text, but that wouldn't work with our browser translate. So I rather have an actual text element inside with the screen reader only class. And that way we can have whatever text we want in here, view blog post um, about whatever the blog post topic is. We can add a, a very descriptive label for each link. So it doesn't have to be the same for each one. And then what we can do is create this link as a component. So I'll call this clickable. And then anywhere I need a link inside any kind of card, I would just use this component. So we have this link that sits on top of everything with some hidden text inside. And now we can start to reuse this component inside buttons, inside really anywhere that we need a clickable element. Because a lot of times you'll have like an arrow button, for instance, on sliders that doesn't have any text in it, but we still need some kind of text there for screen readers. So it's great to have this kind of component that you can just drop in. And again, whenever we're using this, uh, what we'll notice now is we're able to have slots inside of the card, which we couldn't normally have. If the entire card was a link, we're able to have other like text links inside of the paragraph that maybe are on a higher Z index than the whole cards link. So this just gives a lot more flexibility. Now, if we were to publish this, what we'll notice is it really cleans up the, the titles here for the links. So each link can have a unique sort of title and it's separated from the card content. So screen reader users can still read out the image heading and paragraph separately from the link. Now here, this is just repeated a lot of times. We want to kind of group this card content together. And the way we can do that since this is a list is we want to use a list element. So we could always add to the list a role equals list. And to each card, we could add a role equals list item but it's much better to use the actual tags instead. So what I like to do is just use custom elements because it allows us to easily switch between different types of elements without having to delete this whole layout and switch it to a, a list element instead. We can just do UL, which stands for unordered list. OL would be ordered list. Um, but so we'll keep it set to UL for now. And then what we wanna do is go to these cards here and we wanna right click and convert them to a custom element. And then this will be LI, which stands for list item. And I'll go ahead and just connect that tag to a prop on the whole card so I can change that out if needed. So now we have this unordered list and then we have this list item inside. And that's great because if we were using something like a collection list, for instance, in this case, Webflow automatically adds the role equals list to the collection list and role equals list item to that collection item. So if I were to use this card component inside the collection item, I wouldn't want it to have an LI tag. Um, because I used a custom element, I can just switch the tag back over to div and everything is good to go. 
by just switching out that tag there. And in other cases where we're using this card component, we might want it to be an aside tag or an article tag, depending on where it's used. So by using that custom element, we can easily switch the tags on different things. I like to do that with section components as well, because if I want to use this section as a standard div and then wrap it in a section later, we have a lot more flexibility where we can just change out that tag to whatever it needs to be in real time. Plus the custom element gives us uh, extra control, like being able to use the style attribute on it and being able to link up component um, attribute names to a component prop. We couldn't normally do that uh, with other elements. So now if we go ahead and just refresh this here, we'll notice that we now have this list and inside that list, we have list items and inside list each list item, we have the image heading paragraph and link. So we have a much better structure here. Now we always want to test our site with screen readers on windows. We have narrator on Mac, we have voiceover and we can download our own screen readers as well. So under system settings, accessibility, I'll turn voiceover on and I'll click onto the page. I'll hold my control option and U key to bring up this menu. So here I can navigate between different links on the page. If I hit my right arrow key, I can navigate now between the different headings. This section has an H2 and then each of the cards have an H3 inside of that. And then the next section is going to have an H2. This page is missing an H1, so I need to add that. But it's so important to get this heading level set up right because it makes it easy to understand the structure of the page. Now, if I hit right arrow key again, it's jumping between the different forms. And again, this is the different landmarks. So we set up our banner, our primary navigation, our main, our company footer and directory. And this makes it really easy to jump to specific parts on the page. Now I'll hit escape key to get out of this menu. Now for most of our keyboard shortcuts, we're gonna be holding control, option, and command keys together, and then we'll press a different letter. So control, option, command, and then G, for instance, will jump to the next image. And I can keep tabbing between images. If I do uh, control, option, command, L, that'll jump to the next link. And if I do something like control, option, command, and I do X, that's going to jump to the next list. So here it's telling me I'm on a list that has seven items. If I press X again, I'm jumped down to this list. It tells me there's five items, so I can easily jump between all the different lists on the page. If I do um, Control Option Command uh, H, this will jump to the next heading, and I can navigate by headings. So there's all these different tags we can navigate by. Once we set up our structure correctly, it makes navigating so much easier. And just regular tab will jump to the next element and shift tab will jump to the previous element. So we can navigate that way as well. So this is a high level overview of accessibility and Webflow. There's so much more that goes into it, but hopefully this helps you get started in the right place when setting up your sites to be accessible.